Hi, everybody. Good to know. <laughs> yeah, it's good to know that this is being recorded. So this is Susan Gerbeck hosting yet again another About Time Presents, this time with Andras Pinter. Hello, Andras. Hello, Susan. How are you? And we're joined right now by with the well-known skeptic Rob Palmer, who is sitting in and who is making sure and I'm muting him right now, just in case he makes some squeaky noises. <laughs> um, <laughs> and hopefully some more people will join us. If not, that's fine, because this is a great conversation we're going to be able to have. And then it will go up on our YouTube channel, the About Time YouTube channel. And it is a lot of fun, because we've been able to do a few interviews. We've got a lot of really good ones coming up as well. And I have I'm just able to prove that I have some of the most unusual friends and it's great because they're all, they're all different and they're all great and they're all over the world. All over the world. Yeah, that's all right. All over the world. That's right. It's funny because I see you on Drash all the time. It feels like um, probably more than I see some of my family members. <laughs> <laughs> all the time? What do you mean all the time? It feels like I see you all the time. It's great. Yeah, we recently uh, interviewed you for uh, the ESB, that's right. Yeah, and so we did a Skype uh, or whatever <laughs> you did over there. So Andras is a, okay, let me give you a brief bio of him. I'll make up some of it so you can see if you can tell. Andras is in Hungary. He's in a really awesome city that I have visited for a couple nights, and I won't pronounce it. That's right. And can you pronounce it? Here, why is the name? Say it again. Székes Fehérvár. Is That's why called. I will not be pronouncing it, but it's a really it's wonderful a, place. King white, City of Kings. White castle, white, white castle of the Royal Seat. That's the meaning of the name of the town. Here comes Carl with a K and one of his cats, probably. So um, it has uh, it has a lot of archaeological sites. It is where all kings of Hungary, I believe, have been appoint anointed. Uh, for right. a while, at least, at least most of them. Um, yeah, not all of them, but um, it, it couldn't be done uh, for a long time because the country was divided. Uh, when the Turkish occupation came, they had to uh, move the coronation place from my hometown to uh, Bratislava, actually, uh, which is the capital, current capital of uh, Slovakia. It was really interesting. And I want you to also know that um, Andras is a tour guide <laughs> yes, <laughs> if you I am. Tell. <laughs> so he he um we'll talk about this in a minute but i actually got to go to his his town and uh we went he had a lot of errands to run so he dropped me off in a like a courtyard and like four or five hours later he picked me up and and i saw so much <laughs> it was amazing i even saw the church where your parents were married yeah that's right yeah, that's it was right. so cute and the most amazing <laughs> clock Oh my gosh, maybe I'll show you guys some pictures. We'll see. So anyway, Andras is, um, our, I don't know if you would say you're a board member or you're a vice president of the Hungarian Skeptics. How, what is your- Well, we have, a, we have a four member board of directors of, uh, of the Hungarian Skeptics Society and two vice president, a president and an executive president. So it's like- Wait, uh, an executive I'm, president? Yeah, it's like, the, the, uh, don't ask me why we decided to, because I was there when we uh, launched initially the, the Hungarian Skeptic Society in uh, 26, uh, sorry, 2006. And, uh, and I have no idea by now why we decided to do it like that, but uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm one of the vice presidents. That's okay, one of the, as long as you're not an executed vice president that sounds too weird no. okay no okay yeah did i say that yeah you said executive sorry president executive executive oh oh now it makes sense are you making fun of my accent no. now? are you making fun of the no i just thought it was some kind Florida. of term i wasn't familiar right. with okay. executed Poor president Florida, it doesn't know how to pronounce words which i'm is sorry i'm sorry <laughs> okay no 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 i'm anyway. sorry he lives, he lives in this really awesome place. He is mm -hmm. a tour guide. He is all over the world. Mainly, I believe you focus on Canada, taking uh, Hungarians to Canada. That's one of the, the places that I visit the most. Uh, basically, every summer I spend at least a month and a half altogether in, in Canada, uh, spread out into several different tours. But uh, yeah, I tour Canada uh, all, all summer long. 
in Singapore, I believe, and yeah, my repertoire, uh, repertoire has 20 countries included as Ooh, of now. But yeah. never have you been in the United States. No, <laughs> I was going to. Actually, I, sure. got, I got the company decided to send me on the new tour, which covers some of the, the most famous um, national parks of Western United mm -hmm. States. Mm -hmm. And... Um, but it had to be canceled. So oh, that I, pandemic, huh? The next one <laughs> is scheduled for September, but I doubt it would happen. So no. I'm pretty sure I'm not going. Oh, that's so sad. Where were you going to be in the United States? You said, was it specifically in one spot or all over? Yeah, we, we would have uh, flown into uh, Salt Lake City and ended the tour in Salt Lake City as well. So that area, the, those... Those places are uh, mostly oh, so more outdoorsy places, not historical. Yes, places. no, not necessarily historical. So mostly not historical, but uh, yeah, natural history, full of natural history, yes. which is absolutely my turf. I studied biology at uni, so it's it's my turf. That's uh, basically one of the reasons why I got the Canadian tour as well, oh. because uh, the Rockies part of the Canadian tour is uh, quite a, quite a large chunk of it, and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when uh, there was this one uh, colleague of mine, she, she went on the first tour and uh, she was very historically, historical minded uh, of a person. And even though on the eastern part of Canada, uh, there's a lot of history to talk about, a lot of human history. Um, when you're out in the Rockies, human history is is a very thin layer of the whole experience. And uh, most of it is natural history. It's all of the glaciers, um, mm -hmm. the, the ecology, uh, how mountains are being formed and, and how it all got sculpted uh, by, by glaciers and ice and everything. So it's fascinating stuff. And I love talking about that. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you're such a good explainer. Um, I'll, I'll explain you. that in a minute. Um, I want to talk about a lot of different things. You are part of the GSOW project. You are also, um, your expertise is chemtrails, I think, which I think is fantastic. Uh, oh, wait, wait, yeah. wait. You can talk about yeah. it. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, and the ESP podcast. We have to talk about your podcast that you're there with um, Jelena and uh, um, Pontus. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to talk a little bit about QED and different conferences. But mm -hmm. um, before we do that, I have got to open a window. I completely forgot and closed all my windows and closed my door and I'm going to die. <laughs> so let me open Don't do that, door. please. Don't no, do that. So really go and open I'll up the windows. <laughs> <clears throat> and we still don't know who that angry woman, the bust of an angry woman is in the corner behind Susan. We don't do air conditioning nice here. There's no such thing as air conditioning at where I live. Well, I assume there are people who have air conditioning. I just don't know them. We have them in our cars, but nobody really <laughs> uses it. But anyway, I just needed some air in here. Oh my gosh, because we'd gone to the store earlier and I closed up all the windows and normally I just keep them open nowadays. But so let's start with Let's start with GSOW because that's kind of where it started with um, you and I, right? Yes. So in you joined, yeah, you joined in February 6, 2014 with the GSOW project and you were recommended, I guess, um, Gabor is the one who... Yeah, Gabor, Gabor Roshko, who is uh, the current president of the Hungarian Skeptic Society. Yeah. He had heard about it somewhere and said, hey, yeah. this sounds like something you might want to do. Yeah. Uh, he was even thinking back then, he was even thinking about, uh, subscribing to this, uh, new task. Uh, but no, um, he, he decided not to after all, but uh, a couple of us, not, not only me, um, it was like five or six people that, uh, we joined your, your team together with. And, uh, I ended up the only one that, uh, that lasted. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, that was a great experience, and I was so excited to meet you at QED <laughs> 2014. Uh, it was a great experience. We had a nice chat, and uh, we keep 
talking about that whenever tell, Pontus, tell the story. Tell Pontus, the story. you and uh, Yarana and myself are, uh, are together, that we were, I think it was a lunch break. That it was we before were, the conference started. Yes, I oh, just yeah. arrived. No, it was and my a luggage conference, so lost. There were there were things going on. My uh, luggage got lost the, in the cab. <clears throat> yeah, but we we were there because there were things going on. Like a, uh, uh, it it has since become uh, a regular thing that before the conference, the actual conference oh. starts, uh, there is a pre-conference list of events uh now it's called skeptic camp i I believe it was called skeptic camp back then as well Mm -hmm. uh, in 2014 uh so it was sometime around lunch break and pontus was there as well and i had never met pontus before Mm -mm. but the three of us we were just chatting and deciding decided to to go for lunch and we went to mcdonald's (laughs) we sat down (laughs) I still have the, the pictures from, from that mm-hmm. um, lunch. And uh, yeah, it's, it just, whenever I see that picture, it brings back very nice memories. And uh, that's, that's how we started to, to yeah. chat. Sterling was there too. Yeah, Sterling, your son. Uh, yeah, I'd only, and, been, I'd only been in there maybe an hour. And yeah. you came from one side. Hi, Susan, I'm Andrash. I'm one of your GSO deputy members. <laughs> And then on the other side, here comes Pontus, who I guess knew me from online. Hi, Susan, I'm Pontus Binkman, and I'm and da, da, da. I'm like, wonderful. The four of us, let's go to McDonald's. I'm starving. And we sat down at the table. I said, all right, we got some minds here. Let's solve some rules problems. I remember that. And we sat and there, we and you guys got to know serious. each other. Hmm? We were very serious about solving the world's problems. <laughs> Look where uh, we are now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a massive failure, but never mind. Uh, yeah, and then we went back inside, and right. here comes Jelena, who was also a GSDEP member, but you guys didn't yes. know her. And no. her Brad came up, and they sat down, and they're like, hi, I'm Jelena. And, and, and I'm like, oh, great. This is Pontus, this is Andras, and this is Sterling. And we just, and that was that. You knew it right then. You were going to start a podcast. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> actually, that... That is not necessarily true. Uh, it was a year later. So it was the uh, European, the next European Skeptics Congress that was held in London in 2015. Mm-hmm. That's where we got together again, the three of us, uh, Pontus, Yelena, and myself. And I started chatting to Pontus about this idea of mine that, that I, 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 I had started to re, uh, realizing that the problem... Uh, that I see is we get together, the European skeptics get together mm-hmm. every second year. But other than that, there is not much communication and uh, European activism or uh, skeptical activism is as if it wasn't even there. Mm-hmm. And uh, because we all hear, we all listen to the American podcasts, uh, a couple of, a couple of the British ones, the Australian uh, podcast uh, the the brilliant uh, done by the brilliant Richard Saunders, and uh, basically, if it if it hadn't been for Richard Richard Saunders and the Skeptic Zone, the European activism, the uh, the, the the European skeptical people uh, wouldn't have been known at all, because we we were really just restricted to, to those meetings uh, uh, that happened every second year. Mm -hmm. And this is why I came up with the idea that we, we would need to show what, what amazing activism is going on. And we are, we are shadowed and overshadowed by the American and the, the UK movement because that's so dominant on the field. Obviously, because of the language, firstly, uh, because not all of us, if uh, we are, we've been doing this for four and a half, half years, and we're still struggling to express ourselves the way we want to. Uh, so this is how how powerful it is not to have English as a first language. Uh, but we 
we set out to do that. We set out to show how much activism is going on in the different countries. Uh, we wanted to interview people. We've interviewed lots of people uh, from all over the, uh, Europe and all over the world, actually. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's, that's how it all started. So uh, I asked Pontus first, do you want to do a podcast? He said, yeah, of course. Uh, what, what do you have in mind? Then I explained it to him. Uh, he liked the idea. And then uh, together we approached Yelena. And uh, Yelena said, oh, oh, what the hell? Yeah, of course, of course, I want to do it. <laughs> and uh, that was in September. And in November, we, uh, we aired the first episode. And tell everybody the name, in case they don't it's know. The European Skeptics Podcast, which sounds, in a way, it sounds obvious, because we are talking about the European skepticism. Uh, there is a little bit of a catch, though, because uh, it's... Um, it sounds as if we were skeptical about Europe a little bit. <laughs> so we're not Euroskeptics. I have to uh, make that clear. We are skeptics and we are European and uh, we are very proud of it. And um, th- so w- what we really like about this name is that uh, when you put together the initial letters of the words, then it becomes ESP and mm-hmm. uh, this is how we refer to it. Um, the real nowadays. ESP. And the real ESP experience. I love it. I think it's great. <laughs> it's great. So you guys cover a lot of different, you talk about like current topics. You uh, do um, like a topic in history. You do uh, Pontus Pokes the Pope. Somehow or other that got to be a thing where he talks about the Pope every, every time. And you're a weekly podcast, but one week is more of like current events and another week is more of um the uh like like an interview uh yeah not anymore uh it used to be that way um Mm -hmm. at the beginning we tried to do both on the same episode and uh that didn't really work out well because it ended up uh we ended up with very long episodes and we didn't want to uh, lose listeners to to that fact that it's just uh, too long, too, too long, didn't listen, uh, T-L-D-L. Um, <laughs> so uh, I, d- I didn't want that to happen. So we decided to divide it. And uh, every, uh, every second week, it was like a, an interview. Uh, but then we realized that there's so much going on mm-hmm. and there is such a, a lot of activism that we need to cover uh, that... Uh, now we are a bit bit short on the on the interviews. We want to do more interviews, and we want we have a lot of people uh, that we want to interview in the long run, but uh, we haven't done too many of those. Well, what uh, I really enjoyed about the project was that I was um, well. I think of it as a project. Um, one of the things I really enjoy is that you you interview people that I have not heard of. Mm-hmm. and That's the well, idea. now now i'm kind of <laughs> learning who they are and i'm always so impressed by the mm. by the quality of their knowledge their expertise their activism mm-hmm. you have people that are you know activism um on autism i remember the one woman in italy not italy um ireland uh that has a child she's autistic and her children are autistic and she really was fighting against the um bleach things that they were doing to the kids mm-hmm. and stuff like that i cannot think of her or real or, 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 or uh can't think of her name at the moment oh, i'm so embarrassed uh, fiona fiona O'Leary. Fiona, yeah or, yeah. or really yeah, or riley yeah you've had people from romania you've had people from bulgaria you've had people from russia you've had um sweden and it's just incredible the quality of the people that are in europe that as americans here you know we're just totally oblivious to because of course they're they're doing their thing in their native language i mean you have uh qualities uh care coming out with the germans i mean just with the homeopathic um the homeopathic world again in america homeopathy eh, maybe we know somebody who might have done it it's not a big thing but in germany you can get if you're a if you're a skeptic of homeopathy you can be get death threats and so on it is pretty frightening they take that very seriously so there's it's so it's important that you guys have brought our eyes to what's happening in europe 
because we we need to learn best practices and things as as you guys have had it and learn from it how did you react to it how did you get over it and the same back here i mean you guys yeah. don't have as much problem as they do in america with religion um and um like creation is oh well, it depends on it depends creationism. on which country we're talking about well that's uh, true in some some countries religion is a big thing uh there are those very uh religious countries uh in italy you have to be very careful mm -hmm. uh, even in hungary these days you have to be very careful because it's politically charged uh very much so um and uh the moment you start criticizing the church or, or religion, um, you get all those, um, <laughs> well, I haven't ever got a death threat before, um, but, uh, well, people, people get really offended mm -hmm. by, by their religion being, being, uh, criticized. It's so, crazy. Crazy yeah. That, that uh, and, um, uh, and we want to continue to do that, uh, what, what you, you just outlined here, that uh, we want to show how much uh, expertise, expertise, expertise uh, there is, how much uh, knowledge there is, uh, how much activism there is. Uh, before that, I had no idea uh, that, uh, before we started to do that, I, had, I hadn't had any, uh, a def faintest idea of what's going on in Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've learned. I, I speak a, a little bit. Of you Italian. speak good Italian. Oh my gosh, your Italian is awesome. <laughs> well, the Italians say so, or but at the least Italians we think you are, are amazing. The Italians are amazing because they love. If you are, if you manage to uh, say a complete sentence that they understand <laughs> in their language, they're so appreciative of that fact that they will praise you. You're going to be the greatest speaker ever. And, uh, <laughs> it encourages and that you is to try more. <laughs> it encourages you a lot. So much so that uh, I, I got trapped by that feeling, actually. Uh, and uh, I, I gave an actual s a talk last year at, uh, Q at um, Skeptic... Um, Chica. Chica Fest. Chica Fest, where you gave a, gave a talk sort of three years ago it was translated but mine wasn't translated so i had to i had to deliver this, the talk in italian mm -hmm. and it it was a bit bit above elementary level <laughs> that, uh, that i could deliver it at uh but uh, i i wasn't at all happy with my performance but uh but the reception was awesome and then there oh, i love them they're they the came up to me they, they asked me questions and uh mm -hmm. i love the whole experience and i just love the italians and uh the the skeptical movement there mm -hmm. is very well organized uh they have lots of followers uh cheek up the the skeptical organization they run uh is amazingly uh, popular they people know about it and they have a massive superstar mm -hmm. uh, a science popularizer uh, by the name Piero Angela and he was the founder one of the founders of Cheek Up mm -hmm. and uh, he's like a superhero he he's he's over 90 I think he's he's the same age as that David Attenborough or something uh, so he's he's over 90 now uh, and and people even young people like teenagers line up to to have 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 their you know angela it's amazing i i witnessed this so so yeah, Angela and i did a we tour there together we did a funny. tour and it was so much fun we called it the about time tour 2017 2017 yeah three years yeah ago. so i got asked to come and speak to the european hmm. skeptic congress it was held in where was it? It was in um, Rotsov, Poland, Rotsov, Poland, Poland, Poland. Yeah. yeah. Amazing place. And yeah. so I knew I was going to come over there and Mark Edwards said he'd go with me as well. I said, well, I'm not just going to go to Poland and come home. Let's get a car and let's see if Andras will take a week off of work and drive us everywhere at like 300 miles an hour. <laughs> we had so much fun. We went yeah. all over and Andras order, uh, organized all kinds of lectures for us. So we spoke all over, but we ended up at Chikop. That's where we 
we Chica ended Fest, up yeah, yeah Chica mm -hmm. Fest in Cesena, Italy, mm -hmm. and Cesena, Cesena, mm -hmm. and so we had so much fun there. But uh, Pier Angelo, Angela, he is massive. I I yeah. I liken him to if you took Bill Nye, and you took um, oh gee oh Carl Sagan, and yeah. you took who's the TV guy who was um on the news that everybody just adored he was like the voice of america and the news his name was it's not, oh i'm afraid i'm not the right person I, I can't remember his name all of a sudden if you took those three and you and you merged them together that's pierre angela because yeah. he's a science walter expert. cronkite walter cronkite yeah that's good walter cronkite and and Bill Nye and Carl Sagan, if you were to put them together, that's kind of who Pierre Angela is. And the kids, I mean, he's there and he's signing autographs and there's just this long line to get in to see him. And they're crying when they meet him too at times. They're like, yeah. oh my gosh, I've been watching you. Oh my God. And so, do you remember that uh, Massimo told us uh, when we were there that at some point in his life, he had been, I mean, Pierre Angela had been, asked to to accept nomination for president of the country <gasps> oh so he's so popular that even that happened to him uh but he didn't want to go into politics and uh i respect that very he's a great much. science educator yeah, and, I didn't. and and you know it's amazing because most of the world probably doesn't know who he is and yeah he, he's incredible outside and, of italy outside yeah. of italy no one knows i don't understand why they have any pseudoscience whatsoever in italy you know thinking about the the um the impact that he has had i don't get it or i think i guess it would be way worse if he hadn't been around well yeah probably but um italy is full of um uh, superstitions mm -hmm. and uh, uh religion plays a big role in a lot of people's lives especially the further south you go the more important religion becomes in the country mm -hmm. it's 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 really apparent it's it's like you can see it uh the 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 gradual change as you go go southward, uh, you see the change in in that regard, and uh, it's fascinating. I just love Italy, it and uh, too too bad I won't be. I, I and I travel a lot to Italy because uh, because of my work. Tell so tell the, the story about the Papa la Papa Papa. Uh, the the Pope when we were there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, uh, the car that we went on tour with was a rental car and uh i yeah and i booked a hotel for us as well uh and when oh uh, no 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 it was i think it was booked by uh, by massimo but, but anyway we were put in the same hotel uh and in front of the hotel i parked the car and there were signs all over the place uh reminding everyone that the pope was coming that weekend when the the conference was taking place and that cars had to be cleared out of the way because that was where the pope would uh go through and uh i completely ignored the sign and then we went uh we went on uh, even chasing the pope and uh because where the the main event of the conference was uh, was happening like two blocks from there, it was where the Pope was giving his talk. Right. And we even went there and, uh, and uh, there was a massive screen in front of the, the main building the, where the conference was held. Um, and we were watching the Pope, the, the, the Pope speak. And uh, then when I went back to the hotel, you, you were asking about the car, where the car was. And I didn't even notice that the car was not there. <laughs> It had been towed away. Yeah, it turned. It it, it had been towed towed away. It cost me about one hundred and fifty fifty euros. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> that I got by the by the time I got it back. So uh, yeah, uh, it was quite an adventure. And and the Pope. And the Pope remember, we were walking. You and you and I and Mark Edward were walking from our hotel, and there's just crowds of people, all yeah, crammed up against these barriers, on? and we're like, 
what the heck? And then they, every so often you would see like an area and they have a giant screen TV, giant. And they're playing all this music, like hymnal music of chants and stuff. And we're walking along and security's there. And you had a press pass on because you had, uh, Masmo yeah. had given you a press pass so that to get into the conference and the we had to pass through security to get past them and they're like where are you going the Pope's going to be over there and we're like no we're going to the conference over here and they're like mm-hmm. wait I don't understand why would you be walking the opposite direction of where the Pope is going to be the Pope is going to be here and we're like yes we know but we're going so, over there <laughs> Was, they didn't, We've got more in, interesting people to listen to. <laughs> and so, so my, so the Pope spoke at eight in the morning till ten or eight to nine something. Yeah, yeah, like something that. like that. And the yeah. conference actually started around ten. So when we got to the front of our conference, oh my gosh, it's an opera house! It was so incredibly beautiful where we were. I couldn't it even believe gorgeous. that I was on the yes. stage of this thing. And they put us there. And we couldn't go inside the building because we had to all wait for the Pope to do his talk. And then uh, the screen right in front of our building. Then we went into the science, con- you know, it's a science skeptic conference. And I said, I want to save a seat right there in the middle, so right in the front row for the Pope when he comes. Because I thought, well, maybe he'll just walk on down from his little thing and he'll come and hang out and listen to my talk. Even though I wasn't really doing a talk, I did a panel. So there, everybody else on the panel was uh, spoke um, Italian. And then I had a woman, she, she was in my ear. They put a little... Veronica, uh, Veronica Padovani. She, isn't she awesome? And so she yeah, put she this, is. so she was telling me what he was saying, what they were saying, and then I would answer it in English, and then um, the host would translate it into Italian for the audience. And people, people loved it, but the really funny thing, what I was doing is, is that they would ask a question, and I would just answer the question I wanted to answer. <laughs> I just yeah, said, yeah well, I that's very that. nice. But here's I what I'm going to say: the video is all up. If you guys do want to watch Susan, um, just yeah, and, and very right through an Italian, did a very good job trying she to. She laughed. She was laughing in my ear. She's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Susan, that's not what he asked you. I'm like, I don't care. That's what I'm going to answer. <laughs> Never just mind. blame it on me being and she's she's so lovely. Uh, this this year when I was there at uh, Chica Fest in uh, 2019. Uh, she was there and she offered offered me her help uh, because I, I was uh, freaking out somewhat a little bit uh, of a stage fry I had before go- going up and ha- ha- having to talk in Italian to a lot, a lot of Italian skeptics. Um, but I did manage, uh, but she was sitting in, uh, in the front row and uh, I really appreciate that. I, I, yeah. I, they have a lot of people it, it who show up. Those conferences are yeah. massive. What? How many people were at the conference we were at? Uh, a couple, because they had like I a think, science conference at the same time. Like they had different areas. I think they were talking about 600 or 700, but the, this year it was, I don't want to say the wrong number, but it was around 20,000 altogether. 20,000? Yes, because things were happening in oh. several different venues yeah for three days three days uh in a row and there were open venues as well so like on open street venues there was even a sofa <laughs> that they pushed through the streets and uh some uh, they parked the sofa in front of a building and uh it was just like a, like a, a room a, a chat room uh for uh, interesting people it was all pre-organized but but still and uh, there was a loggia at uh, the side of a, of one of the buildings of one of the uh, palazzos which is uh, it was in padova which is one of my favorite places it's beautiful it's a gorgeous um medieval town and by the way it's uh it's where uh galileo galilei uh, taught astronomy and mathematics mm-hmm. at um, at the University of Padua, and uh, so the the atmosphere is amazing. It's full of science. It's like ah, uh, everyone, everything just breathes science. It's. I'm going to see if I can find oh, I a picture that. real quick of it. Yeah. So if anybody gets a chance to go to Chicap, which won't of course be this year. Um, in the future, that this is definitely a place to go. Let me see. I have I have some photos I had pulled up that I wanted to show of some of the different things what this place looked like. So let me share the screen here real quick, so you guys can get an idea of what what we're talking oh. about here. Let me pull this up. Are you showing photos of Padova? So here's here I am on stage. 
Can you guys see that? Ah, so and this is oh, yeah. the this is the the building in the background, the um, opera center, and it was definitely an opera center. And then let's see. Oh gosh, I should have had these all sitting here waiting. Oh, we had a they had a man who was doing optical illusions. Um, I can't think of his name at the moment. He had a whole place that was just optical illusions, and you know you could sit and you could tour that. Here you I here you and I are, and there's Mark's part of him. The buildings were just incredible. It it was a smallish town. Oh, here you are in front of the 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 Pope thing. You and Mark. This is where the Pope was going to be. <laughs> at I think this is a square he was going to be at so you guys are hanging out in front of there the pictures were incredible the the venue was amazing the people were amazing oh here's the um here's the stage oh that's a video I don't know if I want to show that because I don't know what the heck's on there actually now that I think about it but it it just was just an incredible experience being being there just I I would go back in a heartbeat to to um to another one of their conferences incredible place okay i think i will show uh a photo as well oh okay <laughs> uh dueling photos it's because like don't you, you probably don't see that but do you remember my 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 t-shirt uh that has uh, uh excerpts from the origin of species printed on it oh it was all oh, like really tiny Darwin text. Yeah, yeah that's that's what i'm wearing now oh you can't see and i will oh you disabled it okay oh i Sorry. did no i didn't just say oh, here let me let me fix it okay okay here we go now you should be able to do it okay okay Tick, 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 tick. Will it do it? Did it do it? Uh, or maybe I didn't hit the... Okay. Who can share when everybody... Zoom. No, it should be able to do it now. Oh, no, I can't do it. Why? I can't do it because I would have to uh, restart the, the application. Oh, yeah, I know. We don't do that. But Never it was mind. amazing, whatever it was you were going to show us. Yeah, and change. there was a, the, in Prague, before the European Skeptics Congress, uh, the, the, we had a photo taken of us. Uh, I'm standing in, in wearing this T-shirt that I'm wearing right now, uh -huh. and uh, you're reading the text on it, and it's a funny photo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're all going to have a nice laugh because it was really hilarious. It <laughs> 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 was so good. James Randi was there. Yeah, that's right. I got to spend a lot of time with James Randi, which is great, because he was we were, at the he was at the Congress, the European the European Congress. Skeptics Congress, and then he was there at Chicka Fest as well. Mm -hmm. So he went to so, both. Yeah, we yeah we we were laughing a lot about that that we we were basically stalking him. <laughs> I spent a lot of time with James Randi, and it was really incredible. So yeah. going on about so after Chicka Fest, we dropped Mark off at the. Um, well, before well, Chica Fest, we spoke well, at airport. a lot of different places because we mm -hmm. had we had a fourth person in the car with us. Yeah, Lubo Babruv from Bulgaria. From Bulgaria, Sofia, right. Sofia, Bulgaria. So, yeah. So we, <laughs> that was something else. So we're driving around the four of us in the car. I have to be in the back seat because I don't want to have anything to do with cars going fast or anything like that that's just scary I, unless i'm driving it that's fine but other yeah it was mostly it. mark sitting next to me mark uh, or lubo he, or, or lubo yeah, yeah 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 so we went driving around we went to oh gosh can you name all the places we went to where did we go to first was uh, we stopped we spent the night in dresden germany uh yes but we didn't right. talk there uh we no to, it was just uh overnight and um um then we went, uh, my, our, um, one of our um, destinations uh, was Frankfurt, actually. And that we but before Frankfurt, before Frankfurt, uh, we went to Göttingen. And uh, at, at Göttingen, we got uh, greeted and hosted um, by... Uh, um, a, a couple of uh, very nice uh, guys. Uh, one of them, uh... 
I'm going to put you on the spot. Sorry, that's uh, yeah. So Göttingen, uh, we 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 were um, gr- greeted by uh, lovely uh, friends of ours, uh, and uh, and uh, they they hosted us. It was a very nice experience. And then we went on to Frankfurt, where where we meet Annika and um, and Scott. Mm-hmm. We went to the Museum of Natural History there. That's right, and it was amazing. It was a bit overwhelming. And uh, we did a couple of interviews, and then we went on to um, uh, Heidelberg, where we met up with Natalie Grams, which is yes. she is amazing. We went through. I didn't really understand what Heidelberg was, and then we then there's this massive castle. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't yeah. believe it. Oh man! It yeah, was- and then then we met there. We met up uh, with. Um, Natalie Rams, who's a former homeopath and uh, mm-hmm. turned turned critic, and uh, she's uh, she was up until recently she was leading the the home, homeopathy uh, group. Uh, she was the face of of the homeopathy information network, mm-hmm. and uh, that was this um, educational project of uh, GWP, the, the German skeptical organization. And we had a very nice chat. And then we drove on to Switzerland. No, you're completely forgetting. We stopped in Germany. We went and talked to Martin at the, uh, the GWP. Uh, oh, that was before Frankfurt. Headquarter, headquarters. So we got that to go see Darmstadt, the German skeptics Darmstadt. headquarters. Uh-huh. We got in and we had a nice talk with them. They have a huge library. I guess it's all in German. I don't know. Uh, no, no, skeptic, not all in German. It, it's, a, it's an international uh, collection. And of, you're forgetting uh, your favorite items. place where you jumped up and down like a, like a little boy. You were like, oh my gosh, because <gasps> Google, Google yes. had to go. He says, can we stop and talk to um, the European? That was in Darmstadt space. as well, as well, because the European uh, Space Agency has the control center there. And uh, we went for a visit. Because uh, Lubo had um, an, an appointment with uh, one of the spokespeople, I believe, and because uh, Lubo organizes uh, these events in Sofia called uh, uh, Ratio, and uh, these are science, a little bit of skepticism in, included as well, but mostly science communication, science popularization uh, kind of talks. And uh, he managed to get an appointment uh, at the ASA, the European Skepti- uh, Space Agency. And uh, we went along. And yeah, I was jumping up and down like a, like a little boy. I, that, I have to admit that. Uh, it, it was amazing. I've been fascinated by space exploration and, and astronomy and everything that has something to do with space. So, um, so yeah, it was a great experience to me. I've... I will always be grateful for uh, that was, that uh, was to, incredible to for that. Yeah. I, I really didn't know what was going on half the time. You guys just put me in the car, drove me around. I got out and I found <laughs> places to just, I was excited wherever I was at and the pictures I was able to take and the people I was able to meet. And you know how long the tour was altogether? Two weeks, wasn't it? No, no, no. Well, I was there. Uh, distance two... wise. Distance wise. Oh no. We covered 3,300 kilometers. What's that in what's that in uh, meet and uh, miles? Somebody quickly do that. Uh, miles, it's about two thousand, a little bit over two thousand miles. Oh, that's a long ways. That yeah. was a long ways. I was over. I was gone for three weeks, I think, because Mark and I first moved, uh, flew into Norway. We did a yeah, talk in Norway, in and we, yeah, and we did um, Malmo, and we did um, Copenhagen, and we did. Yep. Yeah, and we uh, met up in Prague. Yeah, and so, we went all around. So we were gone for a week before we even started the mm-hmm. tour. And then after we dropped Mark off and Lubo, Lubrio, Lubo? Lubo, Lubo, mm-hmm. Lubo, Mir. <sighs> I, I, yeah, I'm too so old. We, we, dropped, we dropped Mark off. Totally so from, from Germany, we went through uh, Switzerland where we, we uh, talked to the, the Swiss skeptics skeptic. hosted us for, for uh, a little panel discussion. That was and fun. And then, uh, then uh, we went out for a beer. And uh, that was really good. That was, a, that was a nice experience as well in Zurich. And uh, those are amazing guys as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, then we moved on and went to Italy and uh, you took us through the hills you took us over the hills 
amazing to go yeah. that way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Beautiful, just beautiful, stunning. And then that's when we had to cheek up. And then we dropped Mark off in Bologna Airport. Bologna, yeah. Bologna Airport. And yeah. just you and I, we went to Slovenia. You took me to Slovenia, yeah. which is On where my family's from. Yes. I, and we had, we had lunch outside in the sunshine in Slovenia. With a couple of local skeptics. With a couple local ske Slovenian skeptics. I was thrilled. Yeah. I was absolutely Maya, thrilled. That nice. is, that's where my, my grandparents are from, is from Slovenia. And I was thrilled. And then we drove to um, your home. Yeah. In uh, Hungary. Yeah. And uh, you gave you gave a talk in Budapest. Then we drove to Budapest the next day. Uh huh. Did a talk yeah, there. And uh, I showed you around my hometown as well. And uh, then I had to I had to say goodbye to you because uh, then and I met uh, your mom. She's got an amazing garden. She's so yeah. Sweet. So yeah, we had to go. We yeah. got to go check out the garden, and just her and, and she I. She was so lovely trying to, to to communicate with you. <laughs> and we just, but you know what, gardeners and gardeners, they can find a way of talking to each other. So we were we were fine. We went through the garden yeah. and talked about the plants and and you know growing things, and it was it was great. She's got an amazing garden. And then um, after Budapest, she dropped me off to the airport. Or yeah. I got to the airport somehow. I was on my own. No, for you a got to the airport. I, 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 that was I said kind goodbye of scary. to you at the hotel. Actually, I couldn't. I couldn't uh, take you to the That's airport right. because I had to go on a tour, I believe. Mm -hmm. So I my my next tour was coming up, and uh, because basically it was in September, and September is always September and October. September and October are always the one of the busiest times of the year for me. Uh, so uh, yeah. I was I was totally on my own in Budapest for a while there and that was interesting. I I <laughs> I didn't have Wi-Fi on my phone. I only had it at the hotel. I mean, I've learned a lot since then how to get around this kind of stuff, but people did not speak English. It was really interesting and I wanted to see the yeah, Budapest. It's embarrassing. No, no, it was embarrassing that I was so unable to communicate. I wanted to see the Budapest Postal Museum. Mm -hmm. I really, really wanted to go. And it was a walking distance from my hotel. So I had to get all my map together and figure out how I was going to go. And I walked out by myself. And every time I turned a corner, I'd take a turn around, and take a picture of where I went. Mm -hmm. So that when I came back, I could follow the pictures to get back. And um, the, the writing in Hungary, you know, the, the, the actual With all way the things accents. are spelled is long with accents on all of it so I was really having a hard time I, I wouldn't have been able to pronounce anything and I get to the hotel I get to the museum and I didn't have any money to get in because I didn't have um Hungarian foreign yeah I had I had um, euros and they didn't do <laughs> credit cards so yeah. I was really hurt because the people there barely spoke any English and they weren't going to let me in and I'm like I came all the way from California. This is what I want to see here. So one, one of the women, she bought my, money, my euros off of me and gave me enough to be able to get into the museum, which is so nice. And I went through the museum and they were just following me around. I was like the lone person there. Mm. So totally absorbed in the postal history of uh, Magnar. Nothing, nothing displayed in English, I believe. I don't think so. Maybe there was. I think there was there was a, a plastic thing I could translate from. Oh, but okay. I was really interested. It took tons of photos. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Because um, I, most of uh, my teenage and young adult life, I collected stamps. And Magnar Posta had the, they were the most amazing stamps. The artwork mm -hmm. on it is incredible. So I, I was like going through my teenage years again. It was great. I loved it. Can you believe it was three years ago? I I am really having a hard time now. Even three months, I we're on week thirteen. I think Mark and I are here in in uh, lockdown. We sort of have gone out a little bit. At least I have, but it feels like it's been hmm. a year or two yeah. that we've been here. It's but hard you to know believe. What? Uh, I'm I'm having a high, hard time financially. Not very hard because of that. Uh, uh, luckily, I'm I'm lucky that I've got. I've got some savings that uh -huh. I can live off now because I don't, I don't make anything now, uh, now that tourism is basically dead. Um, and, but I enjoy it so much that I, I'm home. I get to do all the stuff that I, I have not been able to do for 
years, actually, three or four years, some things I've been uh, putting off and off and off and off average uh, all the time. And now I get to do all those. And uh, I'm enjoying that immensely. I, I just don't want to go back to work. But after <laughs> that, sooner or later, I will have to go back because uh, otherwise uh, I'll just... I'll just I, I know run out of money and I don't want to do that. I'm trying to get everything done that I've always said I wanted to get done. That's yeah, what I'm doing. That's and I have right. the best garden. Same here. My garden is Same so here. beautiful and it's I'm out able to water and fuss on it and I never could have done that before. It's it's yeah. been incredible. It's really oh, so we didn't finish with Budapest after Budapest? You dropped me off at the airport. Uh you you and went I to went Sofia. To Sofia. So yeah. Sofia in Bulgaria gave a talk, stayed there for a couple of days. They have the best Wi-Fi in the world, I tell you. <laughs> and Germany has the worst. <laughs> yeah. And, then, and in Germany, you cannot pay by, by a credit card anywhere. Wild. You ridiculous. have to have euros or you have to have their bank credit card that's like a German bank credit card. And, I mean, a big hotel or something like that would take, of course, it would take your, your Visa or MasterCard or whatever, but not not like a shop somewhere. So you couldn't really buy anything unless you had mm. cash. And then we kept going from country to country so often that it was changing money. It was like, forget it. Uh, like, that's why I didn't have any Hungarian money, any money from hung Hungary. Then after I went to Budapest by myself, that was great. Well, part of the time. And then I went to Spain and I flew into um, Madrid and the Madrid skeptics hosted me for a couple of days there. And I was able to give a talk there. Another incredible country. I had the time of my life. I was gone three weeks. It was incredible. I went through so many languages and, and, <laughs> and everywhere I went, I was met by a, a skeptic group that would host and take care of me and show me around and then leave me alone by myself. And I would just wander the city and mm -hmm. get totally lost, take a lot of photographs. I can't wait to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but those days are gone for now. Yeah, the part that, uh, that I could be a part of it it was really enjoyable and i really loved every every moment of it i would i would go on another tour with you on a heartbeat <laughs> i would too it was so much fun it was a lot of fun you know what we didn't even mention how beautiful um i didn't really see much of prague because when we got to prague i was mm. dead tired and we got into yeah, yeah. the hotel room and i just fell asleep until it was time to go to the dinner we had but when we got into and I'll say it wrong. Wokla, Poland? <laughs> Wokla? Rot Wok that place is incredible. It is. I would go back to Poland in a heartbeat too. That was yeah, what yeah, a yeah. city. Well, we stayed still, in the old city where they had the it's, college. It's quite regrettable that, that you haven't seen much of, uh, of Prague because uh, yeah, Prague it's is amazing. gorgeous. It's in every corner, you find something historic, mm -hmm. uh, something that that you can you can learn a lot about. And uh, there's so much um, uh, religious history. There is so much. It was the historical center of Europe for a for a long, long time. And a lot of things that were that had an effect on the whole of Europe happened in Prague and the decisions were made in Prague. It was, it was for a long time, it was the center of the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, it's fascinating. And I, yeah. I love, I, I, love I, I, about I that. can't wait to get back over <laughs> there. It's great. We were supposed to go this March. Um, I was going to be giving, not a talk. I was going to be attending a workshop that the Aspen, mm. Aspen, oh Lord. Everything is just goes out of my head. It feels like now <laughs> names, dates, times. The Aspen Society um, arranged with the um, Questioning for S Science, the group that Natalia um, has in Brazil. They mm -hmm. had arranged a workshop where people from all over the world who were science communicators would come and they'd meet each other. There's people from Korea, there's from people from China, from Africa, from America, all over Europe. And we were meeting in Rome. And that would have been my first time in Rome. And so I was going to go over there and stay for a week. And then I was going to go down into um, a place that I've been always wanted to go, which is to go see uh, Pompeii. 
And it so the Napoli skeptics, Napoli, I guess I say it, skeptics were going to host me for a, a talk and I was going to, they were going to come with me, I guess, and we were going to go hang out and we were going to have pizza somewhere and, and I was going to go on the tour. Can I come along? You, of course, you're more welcome to come along. Please do. But that was yeah, March. I, then they moved it to September and it's not going to happen in September. So yeah, and not it'll probably September, be a year that's, or that's more. Sure. I'm really, man. Everything got canceled this year, yeah. but you know, at least we're yeah. safe. So let me see what else I have on my list I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. QED. Can you explain to everybody what QED is? I've only been one time, 2014, incredible, totally different kind of skeptic conference than the ones I'm used to. So tell people about it. You've been to several. Well, uh, I'm... I'm not an authority on QED. I'm I'm not the, the best the best person <laughs> to to talk about it because I'm not on the organizing committee. But it's uh, organized by a brilliant team of organizers uh, from the Merseyside Skeptics uh, and the Manchester Skeptics, and it, it uh, usually takes place in Manchester. Mm -hmm. And uh, for a long time, it was uh, organized every year. Uh, last year, they decided to to skip one year. Uh, it was probably a little bit overwhelming for them uh, to do, do them uh, every year in a row. And um, they decided to skip it. And everyone was looking forward to having QED uh, this year, this October, and it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, so QED is an international skeptical convention. Uh, it's, uh, it's not necessarily a conference-like thing. It's more of a science festival, science and skepticism festival thingy. Uh, there are talks like at a conference, but it's much more informal. The whole, the whole thing is happening like on a, on a very informal basis. Everyone is chatting to everyone. Uh, the, the green room is, is, is there, but no one uses it. So it's, it's like there is no separation of the speakers and the the conference attendants attendees, uh, and and it brings about a very good vibe to the whole thing. And uh, when when you just end up having a chat with a beer in your hand with someone who ten or fifteen minutes earlier had been giving a talk uh, on a large in front of a large audience of about 600 people. Uh, that is quite an experience. And brilliant minds from all over Europe and all over the world. Uh, we met a couple of very interesting people that we ended up interviewing afterwards uh, there. And uh, for a while, they handed out the yearly uh, uh, Occam Awards as well. Mm -hmm. uh, which was given out by the Skeptic magazine, which is the U the the UK magazine, not Skeptic but the Skeptic, and um, there, yeah. So a lot of people were in involved in that, and uh, they gave out gave it out for skeptical activism, and you were nominated. Uh, were you even awarded? Nope, I've never. No, no. Um, but GSOW, so Guerrilla Skepticism Wikipedia, got nominated. If I'm not mistaken, twice. Is yeah, that twice. correct? Mm -hmm. Twice. So uh, that made us very proud, all of us who, who were involved with, uh, with the, your project. And um, then the ESP uh, got, got a nomination and we won the category yes. of, uh, of podcast. Best podcast. Um, wonderful. Made, me, yeah, made my we heart glow. Very, yeah, we were, we were very, very happy about that. And... Uh, yeah, so it, how, how it was done is um, that uh, people had to nominate uh, projects and podcasts and blogs and, and et cetera, et cetera. And um, then there was a, a phase when we had to give a lot of information about uh, how we would uh, explain what we're doing and what the, the greatest pieces of work can, uh, are that we can show for ourselves. And uh, and then there was a select committee that decided on on the the prize. And uh, the last year when we give we we got the 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 Occam Awards, they decided to give out um, a negative award as well. Mm -hmm. So it was the so the Occam Occam's Occam's Awards. Uh, the name comes from Occam's Razor, and the negative award is called 
uh, rusty razor, rusty and razor. it was given. It was given to um, Goop and uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, actually. About QED. Unfortunately, she was not there. <laughs> oh darn it! The one of the and things a, about QED is that they do it in tracks, which is, I think, yes. frustrating to me. I, I, it can be, yeah. Uh, when it comes to uh, three or four uh, or five par- or even five parallel tracks, then your mind just becomes overwhelmed by all the input and you cannot decide where to go and you explode and you <laughs> uh, it's it's difficult to handle mm-hmm. uh but mostly the, the the fun thing about it is that whichever you choose to go and see you will definitely enjoy and you will mm-hmm. not you will have a, a fantastic time and a lot of informative, very entertaining and uh, and very thought provoking chats, talks, panel discussions. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's amazing. They and had podcast tracks, right? Podcast tracks as well, and we we did a podcast track uh, mm-hmm. the, the, the last time as well. Uh, so we recorded a live episode there in front of a live audience which was an amazing experience unfortunately uh yalana could not be there Mm -hmm. but a couple of people could join us so um there was brian ego from um glasgow skeptics Mm -hmm. and uh claire klingenberg who's Mm -hmm. uh who's one of the leaders of um the uh, czech skeptics uh sisyphos and she's um the, the current chair of uh, the European Council of Skeptical Organizations as well. So we work together on the board of, of EXO. And uh, she was she joined us. And last minute, but Jay Novella joined us for, for that show. So it was a blast. It, it was really an enjoyable moment. And, and, and uh, we had a lot of fun. So everybody needs to try to get yourself to a QED at, at some point. Yes, hopefully next year it, it will happen. And they're, they're um, never at the same time as PSYCON? So, but they're at the mm. same time of the year. So you kind of have to put your vacation aside if you're going to get to Psycon in Vegas and Manchester in England. Uh, what There's time of year does uh, Psycon happen? It's the usually the third or fourth weekend of October, close to Halloween. So, so let's talk about. Let's. You mentioned Claire's organization, European mm-hmm. Skeptic Congress, which uh, well, it's conference. not Claire's organization. It's, well, a, it's an umbrella European, organization okay. for European skeptics. But right, she, so she, they have she, a conference now. Chairs that organization. That's so that. I, that's where I met. Uh, I went over there in um, 2014 to give a talk in in Poland, and they do their conferences every two years, and those float from one location to the other, and that was the first one I'd been to. I definitely want to go back because it's, it's a, it's a little smaller, maybe 150, 200 people. And they hold it in a location. that's kind of sponsored by a skeptical organization of that location. And then they, you know, they range their speakers and they have it in a venue and it's more like everybody's at the same time. All the talks are at the same time, but it's very social and lots and lots of different uh, it's done in English <clears throat> and there's a lot of people from all over the, all over Europe that meet up in there. And you went to the one, mm-hmm. this last one? Yeah, that was in 2019. Mm-hmm. And um, it was that was where? It was held um, in uh, Belgium, Hint, which is in Belgium. It's uh, not very far from uh, Brussels. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a brilliant place. It was a, it's a beautiful town as well. A uh, beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, lovely people organizing the event, um, uh, headed by um, uh, um, Paul de Belder, and uh, and yes, it it was a great experience. It wasn't a massive event, so compared to QED, is much more of a of a smaller social gathering kind of thing. Uh, QED is massive. QED has hundreds of people. Uh, the last time I think it was over 650 people. Uh, I know it doesn't compare to uh, uh, what TAM was like uh, mm-hmm. back then. At its height, yeah, uh, 1,400 yeah, people. Yeah. yeah, but it's 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 still a lot of people, and mm-hmm. uh, and it was it was quite an experience. But uh, the European Skeptics Congress was somewhat different. Uh, it was it was more down to earth in that regard. Uh, but we had uh, very nice talks, uh, very lively discussions, 
and some very good decisions were made uh, as to how to go forward with uh, the European Council of Skeptical Organizations. And uh, that's when we, we, at the end, we, we got uh, all, and so not, we extended the board and now we have nine board members, including myself and Pontus. So two thirds of uh, the co-hosts of the European Skeptics podcast <laughs> are on the, the board of the European Council of Skeptical Organizations. And uh, now we have a lot of things um, on our plate. We, we are dealing with, uh, with um, uh, stuff together. I think it has not been this lively, the, the, the discussions, the conversations uh, within the board um, since, uh, since the beginning. So probably, um, we, so we live in good times uh, and uh, we are planning to make uh, efforts to actually run some projects that we we run together uh cross country projects that uh that are headed and led by exo oh i'm really curious to see so, what these are going to be yeah it's it's a it's a great thing that we have uh someone like like claire uh, heading the organization Organi now organizing it because she's very agile she 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 wants to do stuff she wants to go forward she 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 pushes for stuff if uh if it um looks like it's uh, just settling down too much then uh we can move it forward and can you say where the next uh, conference is going to be i'm afraid i'm afraid i'm not allowed to okay but uh it but has you... been decided it has been okay. decided uh and can you say what uh, month when it's 2021 right no unfortunately because of uh organizational issues uh Aww. thanks to covid19 uh obviously we don't have enough time to to pull it off because we want to do uh, have it organized on the spring so in in a springtime for a springtime uh springtime um event uh, we had we need need more time so um this is why it's going to happen in 2012 uh 2022 sorry everything's moving to 2022 and it's going to be insane in 2022 because everything's moving to well, they're trying to get to 2021, but I think a lot of it's going to end up having to move till either can late I just 2020. Say, uh -huh. Sorry, can I just say thanks to everyone who, who joined us and they have to leave now. So uh, people are saying goodbye on the chat. Uh, <laughs> so thanks guys for coming. And, yeah, uh, well, I, yeah. Okay. Well, we got a couple more things. So, so we want to go to uh, Q&A. Let's see what we have. Uh, oh, you know, I did want to mention you're part of the GSOW project and I don't know why, but I showed that you only have written three Wikipedia pages, which is strange. I thought you'd written more than that. Uh, well, I... I have the Hungarian Skeptic Society. You wrote that in English. And that Wikipedia page has been viewed 3,672 times. And I, I've written up a couple of Hungarian Well, then Wikipedia I need to know that. Pages. Put them on the stat badger. You could give and... it to me later. Yeah, I think I think they're on there. Uh, there might I not be three. more, much more than that. I I wrote up the English page for Deborah Hyde. I don't have that on here. You don't have that on there, mm -mm. huh? So we need to we need to um, we need to talk about that later. But what I have is I have uh, Hungarian Skeptic Society in English. Yes. Uh, recently, you re you rewrote the Wikipedia page for traditional Chinese medicine in Hungarian. Yeah, and 5G in Hungary. And 5G. Yeah. So the uh, Chinese medicine one has got 321 views, but the 5G page in Hungarian has 19,283 views. Yeah. Big difference. That's, so that's really good. That's people a very are, hot topic. People are checking about, about 5G. And how does it feel to know that you're probably helping to change minds? Well, it, it feels awesome. I mean... Here comes Mark Edward. Hey, Hello, Mark. Mark. <laughs> Hello, how are you? How are you? There's Rob and Carl. Good to see you. Good to see you. And Cat. Cat. And Cat. <laughs> and Rash, are you in a sauna? <laughs> uh, he says, no. This uh, is his upper floor in his house. Well, I hope come so. summer, come summer, it will feel like that. But uh, I'm afraid <laughs> summer not. Summer, it will feel like that. 
Hope to see you soon. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Andras did... says he would love to go on another tour with us. That was so much fun. <laughs> Yeah, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Put a piece again, of bread on the fence in Zurich. <laughs> <laughs> I completely forgot that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was, that was a hilarious. roll. It was a roll. Piece of, Mark put. Uh, we went to breakfast in. He said Zurich, but I think it was Dresden. We it was Dresden. It was Dresden. And he got a roll from from dinner breakfast, and he went and he put it. I'll, I'll have to show it's like a minute video or something like that. But anyway, so go ahead. Um, so, you, so those three pages that I showed that you've written are, um, you're at like 22,000 page views. And I was saying, how does it feel to have uh, changed somebody's minds? I, I'm sure you are. I mean, you've got almost 20,000 views for 5G. Well, to be honest, it's not about changing minds. It's about... Um, Putting it out there and uh, and the, the possibility that I'm that content might uh, end up uh, making people think a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And um, ever since I was a little boy, I I've always wanted to share stuff. That uh, that whenever I learned something new, I wanted to share it with someone. I wanted to 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 tell the story to someone. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, uh, Ever since I've been um, having uh, a blast in um, in trying to educate people, this is why I'm enjoying my work as a tour guide very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so editing Wikipedia is a different thing because I'm not very good at writing. Oh, uh, I haven't noticed that. Yeah, so I it's it's a lot of effort for me to to write down stuff. Uh, but but uh, I'm getting the hang of it, but um, but I'm not there yet. Uh, but yeah, the fact that I'm I'm, it's probably an easier way to change people's minds than to confront them mm -hmm. directly, uh, because then things like uh, the the usual um, confirmation bias and and uh, rejecting uh, other ideas. Uh, uh, is is not necessarily at play or not to that extent and uh yeah i think uh, it uh, it's it's one of the reasons why wikipedia editing wikipedia is probably the best way of mm -hmm. uh, of skeptical of doing skeptical activism activism and uh i managed to put together the old part of the old team uh they're not going to join rejoin guerrilla skeptics uh but we we managed to put together again a bit of a task force a wikipedia task force so even though they're not going to be necessary and not necessarily going to be a part of the team the international team per se i will stay part of the team and uh i will try to use everything that i've learned here uh and put it in, in a to, to good use within the Hungarian Skeptic Society. Um, so, but then I still haven't given up on uh, recruiting people for GSOW. Right, either. well, of course, <laughs> that will be good. Um, so one of the things that, um, oh, so Carl was talking about, uh, mentioned in the chat that he, he's uh, one of our main photographers for mm -hmm. Psycon. Yeah. And so everywhere he goes, he takes pictures and, you know, uh, uploads them to Wikipedia for us, Wikimedia, and I think Deborah Hyde's picture that's on her her English Wikipedia page he took, and uh, he's written he's taken a lot of pictures from a lot of different conferences. It's great because I remember there was one PsyCon this two years ago that um, I saw Randy sitting at the very end of the audience, and Banachek was on the stage, and I made Carl. I went and found him, and I said, "Put your big lens on. I want a picture of. I want him on stage with." where you could see Randy sitting way over there and he took the picture just like I asked and it was like, that's what I want. Um, Rob wanted to, um, <laughs> Rob wanted to ask you about the translation pro project for the promo. The promo. Yeah, it's, um, it's happening. Um, a couple of people did sign up for it and uh I think I might end up being the, the the one who's holding it back because I I'm too I'm too busy 
uh, with other stuff. Uh, one of the projects that I uh, took upon myself to to lead uh, uh, another translation project is uh, new uh, translations for the uh, for the subtitles for the vaccination chronicles. Ooh. Because I I decided that needs to be that done I badly. Want, Explain yes, what that is. I decided is. that I want to I want to have a, tra a translation for every European language I agree. of the subtitles. And uh, now it's happening. There are okay. people at work. That is, the work is in progress. Oh, uh, good. That needed so, to be done so bad. Explain what that are, is. For, for those, those who don't know what, the, what that is, uh, The Vaccination Chronicles is a documentary done by Australian Skeptics Inc. and uh, the aforementioned Richard Saunders. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it, it basically plays... Um, uh, on on the viewers' emotions mostly, it's very factual. It's it's educational, but mostly what the great advantage of of of, of watching it is that you get a picture of what it was like to have all those diseases present in our society before the vaccines came around. And polio, uh, how German terrible measles. it was to have polio, measles, uh, pertussis, and all that stuff that killed lots of children, and how many people uh, lost their friends, their their school school kids uh, that were friends with, uh, to these diseases, and uh, it's it's very powerful. So uh, I guarantee that uh, everyone who has human emotions. Uh, will burst into tears at some point or or another uh, of watching their video, uh, but this is why I think because of the the vaccination movement being so prevalent these days and it 's gaining more and more ground by the day, uh, we have to have these countermeasures at hand, and the the best way to reach people is to translate stuff and uh, uh, Going back to the original question uh, asked by Rob, so he made these brilliant pro uh, promos for GSOW, uh, some of which we even played on the ESP uh, on occasion. And um, I asked him if uh, it would be a good idea to, to translate uh, it into different languages so that it can help us in the recruitment process, mm -hmm. uh, recruiting uh, editors because you you always talk about how badly you need editors in different languages because it's one thing to have a lot of english speaking editors which is great but it's it helps a lot mm -hmm. uh, the the overall project um, if if we have people speaking other languages as well right there's a lot of work to be done that is not english yeah, I can a tell lot. you with Hungarian Wikipedia, it's in a terrible shape in, in general when we talk about the content there. Lots of people put in a lot of work, but it's only driven by their interests. So a lot of things are very marginal. So people are not necessarily interested in editing Wikipedia pages uh, in, uh, let's say, I don't know, um, Chemtrail. 5G, for example, yeah. 5G or chemtrail. <laughs> oh, chemtrail, that's a different thing. Um, yeah, so uh, so we are struggling to, to put out the, the good content because with English Wikipedia, it's, it's easier because it has a much larger pool of editors. Uh, and obviously that, that means that um, the content is, is, is of okay. higher quality. Well, Not so, always. <laughs> well, you know, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go to, we're going to go to uh, questions, but first I'm going to, I got this video. So to set it up, it's only 40 seconds long. Oh, with Mark? Okay. So this is in Dresden. We just come back from breakfast and I don't know. Can you see it? Can you hear it too? Can you guys hear it? No, Dresden. I don't think so. Okay. Let me see. Well, just watch because it doesn't need to have a lot of. He says it's art. <laughs> so Mark is just going to take some pictures of, of his art. 
and there's a liberal. You know, I, I, I was a little bit concerned because I, I was afraid that he was losing it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mark normally, though. See it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, by the end of the tour, I, I realized that. But uh, that this is so. And everybody's uh, taking a picture the of Mark taking pictures, and I'm videotaking of all that. That's I just love that video. It's because it kind of sums up our whole our tour in a way that we were just having a good time doing whatever we wanted to do. It was it was fun. It was it was yeah. completely fun. Let's so on Facebook if people asked any questions because I can't see Facebook. Uh, I I don't see any questions on Facebook. I just checked. Uh, there are a couple of comments. Anything but interesting? Because I, I haven't. I can't see the it. greetings. Um, I'd like to reciprocate, by the way. So, greetings, everyone. Oh, yeah, here we are. Greetings, greetings. Hi. Kenny Biddle was here. Pavel was here. Oh, wow. All right. There's 11 comments, apparently, that I'm not seeing. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So, um, any questions from the, the peanut gallery here? Carl or Rob? The, and anything else that you wanted to add? Um, Andras, before we go. Well, I wanted to um, ask Andras to speak some more about my brilliant promos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You didn't really describe what you were talking about for the people who don't know what the promos are. So, just, you know. well, since since you grabbed the mic, uh, do you want to do you want to explain what it is? Of course, he does. <laughs> we love Rob. Well, we did a series of of promo promotional um, audio spots for the Gorilla Skeptics. And uh, so far, I think the ESP Experience and the Skeptic Zone have been the two podcasts that have played them. I may have missed it somewhere else. Susan sent them out originally, and, uh, and I'm not quite sure if they were played anywhere else. But basically, the format was to have true believers voicing whatever kooky stuff they, they uh, believe in the beginning. And I think we always had four people. And then the GSOW uh, people, which was myself and Paul Serrano, would come in and explain how you could counter this by helping to edit Wikipedia in our, on our team. And, and the fun thing was for all but one of the promos, I got um, should be well-known podcaster voices, including Jelena as one, and people from The Skeptic's Guide and uh, Squaring the Strange and Richard Saunders to voice the true believers. So it was kind of funny. And most of the time they wrote whatever they wanted. So it was mm -hmm. kind of the opposite of what they would believe. Richard did something about psychic detec detectives. I think I used him twice. And then there was another one he did about crop circles being too intricate yeah, and yeah. Didn't, did not have made them. And uh, let's see, we had um, Ross from Ono, Ross and Carrie, because they were on a flat earth kick, talking all about how the flat earth is real and NASA's tricked us all. <laughs> so it was really cool. So Andras's idea was to get um, you know, native speakers of non-English languages to translate the original scripts and then play those. And we might even do one where it's a mixed bag where we were just talking about that the other day, where we have maybe four European languages as the true believers and then English maybe at the end, something like that. So it's still being worked out. Just for fun. They're great. They're well done. Yeah, there's several people with the scripts uh, working it into Italian and Spanish as far as I know now and maybe Czech at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be fun. So I think uh, Pol yeah, Polish, Italian, Czech, German, and uh, yeah, and Hungarian. Very cool, Very cool idea. And yeah. we could mix it up and just have different times, different think. different things. I mean, you yeah. know, it doesn't have to be the same promo run every time. I think people would would find it interesting to to listen and have different uh, voices and different stories, and then they'll mm. be listening, and all of a sudden it comes up in their language. I think that would be really clever. Mm -hmm. I'm all for it. I anything that to gets people's interest and and uh, make them understand that we really want them to um, join our project. I'm going to put the vaccination chronicles um, link in the video because this will oh, go up on our YouTube channel. That's a good idea. Thank you. And uh, I'll also put a link up to the ESP podcast. And Thank you. if there's anything else that you can think of that I should probably put up, um, I will happily do that in the links. Is there anything else that anybody else needs to know before we go? Well, anything. well, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, um, this is me being a, a, a tour guide. Okay. Do you remember that when you were here, you recorded a video and put it yeah. up on YouTube? Oh, of you explaining the... Um, 
the, the king yeah the, the, how the, the grave how yeah i love that yeah i've seen it not too long ago again that was great and the fantastic thing was about that that someone from this town found that video somehow and started spreading the word and and shared it on facebook and it got and and wrote an um uh, even wrote uh an article about it on uh, on the local local newspaper and uh, it oh, got really? shared a lot of times and people people watched it and it got praise a lot so um <laughs> i really appreciate it that that you put it up there and it's available there uh and uh yeah i i it, it felt great i it I was it was great i learned a lot and i'm i and document I, everything that's just me i document it and i share it i it, i don't go through and edit it it's just that is how it is and you were like well wait maybe we should edit this before i'm like it's too late it's loaded <laughs> Uploaded yeah already. never mind never mind. never mind nobody cares i mean it was on the fly no, I, don't, I just said I don't this deny is really it neat me. i said this is really interesting and you started to tell me i'm like no stop let me put my camera on and the video on and let's <laughs> let's have you explain it to me and i mean if if it's for me only that's and, fine uh, but yeah just, they picked it up and i was like oh wow uh, just one thing uh, one more thing about hey, they'll that get you is, some local uh, that business we start doing tours yeah 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 probably and uh, I've got this idea. I've, I've had it for a while, and I even gave a couple of talks about that. Uh, that since I'm a, a guide and I'm a skeptic, uh, I started explaining stuff that that found its way. Um, I mean, I mean, bogus claims and and uh, pseudo history items that made their way into tourism and uh, some guidebooks even picked up a couple of those and uh, and uh, local tour guides uh, sometimes make those claims so that uh, every everything that they say sounds more interesting to american tourists um so i decided that i i do a couple of those debunkings of a couple of those claims and uh I gave uh, a couple of talks about that uh, at Skepticam before QED. Um, the Edinburgh Skeptics uh, were kind enough to invite me for a talk at um, the Edinburgh uh, Festival, the Fringe oh, that's Festival. That's right. You got to go to that, and man. I've never yes. Been. And I appeared on a, on a couple of podcasts as well with uh, with that topic. Uh, I I and I I I want to pursue that um, uh, in the future. So I have this idea of uh, launching an actual YouTube channel with uh, with those stories and explaining all that. Because there's a lot of things. Right. Go ahead. Well, what I was going to say is that, you know people who are watching this or who who are in my world and they think what can i do what can i do you know and, and of course i'm going to encourage them to come into gsow but really what it is and part of really the mission of gsow isn't to just improve wikipedia pages that's a that's a byproduct of what what we're all about my mo whole mission and if you look at the mission statement on our website which is abouttimeproject.org is to find people train them introduce them to people encourage them motivate them and get them doing something that they want to do that can help and help yeah. fight back and i don't want yeah. to say what that is because like you're saying about the tour business tour business that's not something that would have come up to me i wouldn't have said hmm i think we need somebody who can <clears throat> kind of infiltrate the tour business tour industry and, and get all this bs out of here no people have expertise in the area that they have or they have interests that i don't have any clue what it is and the about time project what we want to do is we want to figure out what that is and help you express it or help you do it so i mean of course you know i'm i'm if, if you need any help of which i'm sure you don't but if you do getting it out there anything you want to do please let me know andrash and for anybody listening okay. i really do want to support people doing things that are helping um sometimes i can be a little negative and i've had people write to me and ask these projects they want to do these 
grandiose projects. I've had many companies actually write to me from France and different places that are trying to start like the next Snopes or the next Wikipedia. Yeah. And I, you know, when you, they're, they're very into the technical stuff. They've got it all figured out how to make the, um, the item. They've got that completely figured out, but they don't have a clue how to manage a group because they're like, oh, volunteers will come and they will do this thing. I'm like, okay, where are you going to find the volunteers from? Yeah, it's, uh, it's hard how, to how come are you going to organize them? I don't know. Volunteers are, are hard to come by. It's, a, it's really hard. I've been running a volunteer group for a long time. It's not, it's like herding cats. And it's, uh, well, it depends, actually. <laughs> in the, uh, there are things and there are issues, projects, along which people are happy to, to work s- some extra time. Or, yeah, or for a limited and amount of time. They'll say, for okay, you've got me for two months for or whatever. Long, yeah. But like they don't want to make commitments for the ten years or for the rest of your life. You're going to be, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the DSOW. But that's yeah. the idea. Is is you know, there's all sorts of great ideas out there, but some of them have already been done. And maybe yeah. you should kind of go along and see if you can either improve on that one or guide it in a certain way or branch off in a sister organization connected to it. But re remaking uh, something like a Wikipedia or a Snopes or, or a GSOW or something like that. It really is a lot more work. Maybe we make it look too easy, but it's a lot more work than you think that is going on behind the scenes. It's oh, not, yeah. it's not as simple as, Oh, I'll make a website. Everybody will come to the website. They'll volunteer. And no, okay, and, then once you're, you start, and then it's gone. Yeah. And once you start, start doing something, it's a commitment. Uh, I, I, couldn't realize that until I st- we started doing the podcast how much of work it requires mm-hmm. and you put in a that. lot of hours <laughs> every week and uh yeah <laughs> Richard, Richard Richard and the others uh they told us are are, are you sure about this uh yeah, yeah. And we we were joking a lot about that at the beginning with Pon especially with Pontus and Yelena that uh, oh oh look yet another skeptical podcast out there but why we do believe that it has its place our podcast Mm -hmm. is because there is no podcast out there that focuses specifically on the european right side of things and the european level activism Mm -hmm. uh as i mentioned richard saunders does a very good job in covering uh uh some events and some uh, interviewing some people trying to make in even organizations european organizations visible mm-hmm. but it's it's still different from having something that is dedicated to that mm-hmm. so this is why we keep doing it this is why we haven't given up yet and uh, funnily most of our listeners at least based on our statistics online uh, we host our podcast on soundcloud and uh, obviously at the age of vpns and and stuff like that uh, it's it's hard to be sure of where people actually listen to our podcast from but according to those statistics most of our listeners are in the us mm-hmm. <laughs> i'm not surprised i'm a listener and a we get we get a lot of very good feedback about how amazing it is to to learn about what's going on in Europe. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm totally so surprised, we'll and doing that. and I am one of those people who would say to somebody who says I want to start a blog or I want to start a podcast, I would say uh, maybe not. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because if it's in English, it needs to have a really unique um, theme, something that is totally different. Because we don't need just another podcast. We need something. Yeah, that's that- right. That's, that's right. different. I am a huge advocate and I would love to have this as a project for the about time project um, to encourage more skeptic podcasts in languages other than English. I think yeah. that is way overdone, uh, way, way not done. It's, it's, it's yeah. a task that needs to be done. And so it's very much overdue, yeah. I, I think that needs to be done is uh, the focus is on a place or a topic or something that's not covered. And yeah, the other thing is that uh, we need people, but 
across the spectrum, when you look around and you see the skeptical activists that you know and you work with uh, occasionally, you realize doing the stuff mm -hmm. or the same circle of people. Mm -hmm. And you so count them on one I, hand, I two have hands, this, I have this idea along with the, the idea that I told you, I have this idea of, of starting a hung, uh, Hungarian language skepticism 101 kind of show. Yeah, I, I oh, don't just have add it to your the, list of things to do on capacity. Like, so if I, you, if I didn't need to work, uh -huh. I didn't need to go to work as a tour guide, I would be more than happy to dedicate all my time to that. But uh, no one's going to pay for that. So it's 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 one there's of the no issues. money in it there is no money there's in no this. money in this so and there is only so much you can do as an activist because and you don't want to burn there out. is there is activism and there is being a loser <laughs> and uh i have a tendency to go over to the loser side of things uh because whenever people uh, i i explain what i do and and how much stuff i'm involved in then they asked me if I get paid for any of that. And uh, well, it's, it's a valid question. Well, and but, I but do you, and the I experiences that you a lot have of, uh, and the people you know outweigh yeah. the money that it brings in, I know, yeah, that's kind of like. And oh. I do believe that it's worth doing because it's, it's something that needs to be done. And, well, you have to go um, on tour with Mark Edward for a week and watch him put bread on. <laughs> exactly. We definitely have to do that again. <laughs> We have to do that again. I mean, the world, everybody would want to do that. That's going to be like, a, a top, that's going to be on everybody's bucket list, especially everybody who saw that now. They'd be like, I have to go on <laughs> tour with Mark Edward and watch him do. He's a fun strange, and lovely guy. He's, he's strange things that he's a performance <laughs> artist. He just yeah. is totally comfortable doing. And those whatever. stories. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have him on here one of these days, but we'll just bicker. I'll say, no, you got that wrong. This is how it was. Shut up. Let me tell you how it went. <laughs> yeah. Here he comes back. All right. So I should probably um, in this because I'm having too much fun and we'll talk for another half an hour, but you know. Yeah. 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 So thank you, Andras, for being with us today. Rob Thank and you Carl for having me. Carl's Kitty and um, everybody else. Thank you guys us for on tuning Facebook. in. And for those people, oh, the kitty cats got to say goodbye too. And then we'll see you guys in um, soon. And I will be doing more of these talks. I'm not exactly sure who I have next, but I will have somebody interesting for you guys. As I said, I have an amazing circle of friends that I can, I can have long conversations with. This is my chance to catch up with everybody. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is lovely. I'm, I'm, I don't know how useful it might be to oh, anyone listening, are you kidding? but it was a lot of fun doing, and uh, I, I always love chatting with you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, stay safe. You guys, yeah, definitely. It's America. We got to stay safe. Bye, oh, everybody. Yeah.